Welcome to Past People. Please consider subscribing to support my channel. Charlotte of Mecklenburg Strelitz, the Queen Consort of Great Britain and Ireland, rose from humble origins as a minor German country gente to her esteemed position. Alongside King George III, she shared a happy marriage and a remarkable parenthood, blessed with an astonishing brood of 15 children. While her husband faced the loss of the American Revolution and the sorrow of her dear friend Marie Antoinette's demise in the French Revolution, Charlotte herself stayed away from political matters. Nonetheless, she made significant cultural contributions, introducing the Christmas tree to Britain. As the years advanced, she witnessed her cherished husband's descent into mental illness, while her children grappled with the challenges of securing a new generation of royals. Born Sophia Charlotte on the 19th of May 1744, she was the eighth child out of ten, born to Duke Charles Louis Frederick of Mecklenburg and Princess Elizabeth Albertine. Charles, the second son of the ruling Duke of Mecklenburg, hailed from a small duchy in northern Germany, part of the Holy Roman Empire at that time. Her upbringing primarily revolved around household management, preparing her for the expected role of a minor German prince's wife. Charlotte's life took a dramatic turn when her brother ascended to become the new Duke of mecklenburg strelitz The family relocated to the town of Neustrelitz where Charlotte was exposed to courtly life, art and music. Her mother formed an alliance with King George II of Great Britain, as Mecklenburg shared a border with George's hereditary Duchy of Hanover. The two German families had numerous connections, with Charlotte's mother being the second cousin of Augusta of Saxe Gotha, the British king's daughter-in-law and soon-to-be mother of King George III. At the age of 22, George III initially fell in love with Lady Sarah Lennox. However, his advisers discouraged him from marrying an English aristocrat. Instead, his mother urged him to consider a match within their own family. Princess Charlotte, George's third cousin, captured his attention. Charlotte's appeal to George extended beyond her physical appearance and her upbringing in an insignificant German duchy meant that she had little exposure to politics and intrigue. The king publicly declared his intention to marry Charlotte and dispatched councillors to bring her from Mecklenburg to the UK. The British lords negotiated and finalised the marriage contract, leading to three days of joyful celebrations before Charlotte bid farewell to her homeland forever. The journey to London proved arduous, lasting two months. When Charlotte finally arrived, she was plagued by seasickness and bloated from the storms at sea. The bridal party landed on the coast and hastened their way to London, eventually reaching St James's Palace. There at the garden gate at 3.30pm, Charlotte met her groom and his family for the first time. After a brief respite, the couple married in a small ceremony held in the Royal Chapel at 9pm on the same day. Just two weeks later, the newlywed king and queen were jointly crowned in a grand ceremony at Westminster Abbey. The youthful pair quickly gained immense popularity, and on their way to the opera, an exuberant crowd yearned for a glimpse of them in their carriage, resulting in a tragic incident where four people were crushed to death. While Charlotte didn't speak English fluently, her groom was well versed in German, enabling them to communicate effectively. Mindful of her mother's struggles to maintain control over Mecklenburg, the king advised Charlotte against meddling in political affairs, to which she displayed little interest. The couple developed a strong and affectionate bond, with George remaining faithful. George embodied a down-to-earth nature and earned the moniker Farmer George. He had little affinity for ostentation and courtly scheming, preferring a simple existence, rooted in domestic comforts. Preferring a simple existence rooted in domestic comforts, frugality, plain cuisine and temperance. Charlotte, having been raised in a similar manner, found the alignment of values agreeable. Her vivacious and sociable disposition complemented his introspective shyness, and though she quickly acquired proficiency in English, her speech bore a notable accent. Observers noted her initial timidity, 
Yet she became quite confident among familiar faces, relishing in delightful gossip. Eleven months after their nuptials and three months following her 18th birthday, Charlotte gave birth to their first child, George, the Prince of Wales, who would eventually ascend to the throne as George IV. Subsequently, she brought forth a total of 15 offspring, compromising nine sons and six daughters. Among them were Frederick William, destined to succeed his brother as William IV, Charlotte, who married the King of Württemberg, Edward, father to Queen Victoria, Augusta Elizabeth, who became the Landgravine of hesse homburg Ernest Augusta, who later became King of Hanover, Augustus Frederick Adolphus, Mary Sophia, Octavius, Alfred and Amelia. Charlotte's final child entered the world when she was 39 years old, with a considerable age gap between Prince George and Princess Amelia. The Queen frequently lamented her perpetual state of pregnancy, expressing, I cannot imagine a prisoner longing more ardently for freedom than I do for relief and the conclusion of my campaign. It would bring me joy to know that it was the final time. Nevertheless, she harboured immense love for her children, and tragically, two of her sons, Alfred II and Octavius IV, succumbed to smallpox. However, the rest of her children survived to adulthood, except for Amelia, who tragically fell victim to tuberculosis at the age of 27. Unlike many royalty, King George and Queen Charlotte maintained a deeply involved role in their children's lives. George delighted in frolicking on the floor and engaging in games with his brood in the garden. Charlotte, while more formal and strict, displayed affectionate care towards her offspring. Education held paramount importance to her, employing tutors for her sons as expected of princes, but distinctively appointing well-educated governesses to educate her daughters. Charlotte's relationship with her mother-in-law, Augusta, remained strained. Augusta even paid spies among Charlotte's staff, enforcing rigid court protocols that hindered the Queen's ability to befriend British ladies. Consequently, Charlotte relied heavily on the companionship of her German entourage, and Augusta would then criticise Charlotte for her failure to assimilate into her new home. Within four years of their marriage, George experienced his first initial bout of mental illness, yet Augusta deliberately kept Charlotte uninformed about her husband's condition. Parliament passed a bill dictating that if the king became incapacitated, Charlotte would assume the role of regent. Augusta vehemently opposed this, desiring the regency for herself. As George's love for his wife and their growing brood intensified, Queen Charlotte's stature at court surged, eclipsing her mother-in-law's influence. Princess Augusta passed away at the age of 52, 11 years into her son's marriage. During their wedding, the official royal residence was St James's Palace, a creation of Henry VII nestled in the heart of London. However, George and Charlotte preferred to reside in the suburban palaces of Kew and Windsor Castle. They embraced a laid-back lifestyle, often strolling through the gardens together without an entourage. Charlotte took a keen interest in developing the gardens at Kew. The Queen nurtured an ardent passion for botany, amassing a vast collection of plant species obtained by British explorers from all corners of the world. In her honour, the South African bird of paradise is named Strelitzia regine. Her fascination extended to the miragerie of exotic creatures as well. As a wedding gift, she received South African zebras and kept an elephant, kangaroos and parrots. Two Pomeranian dogs, Phoebe and Mercury, accompanied her from Germany and she bestowed their offspring upon favoured courtiers, thus popularising the breed in Britain. Her tradition continued by her granddaughter, Queen Victoria. To provide a more secluded haven for his beloved wife, George acquired Buckingham House, which Charlotte adored, and later became known as the Queen's House. Many of their children were born in there, and Charlotte left her mark by expanding and redecorating the interiors of Buckingham House and the Queen's Lodge at Windsor, embellishing them with vibrant colours and Indian paper. Her style was renowned for its dazzling charm and tastefulness, yet unfortunately none of her interior designers have survived. Later, her son, George IV, extensively altered Buckingham House, 
transforming it into the iconic Buckingham Palace that still serves as the official royal residence under Queen Victoria's reign and to this day. The royal couple embraced the novel concept of seaside holidays, thereby popularising beach vacations. In 1768, the city of Charlotte, North Carolina, was named in honour of the British Queen, while the country in which it resides was named Mecklenburg. Often referred to as a Queen City, Charlotte boasts several statues commemorating Queen Charlotte's legacy. Her Majesty gained renown for her compassionate treatments of servants, displaying great kindness towards them. Deeply sympathetic to the plight of the poor, she decided to alleviate philanthropy as a new public face of the royal family, a tradition that still endures. She established an orphanage and a maternity hospital and organised charity balls to support her initiatives. On the 19th of May 1780, in celebration of her 38th birthday, George hosted a ball to raise funds for Chelsea Hospital. The event introduced a new tradition, the royal presentation of all unmarried noble ladies, and they were invited to be presented before Queen Charlotte in the drawing room at St James's Palace. This marked the inception of the London social season, a crucial milestone for aristocratic daughters in their pursuit of suitable matches. They donned exquisite court dresses adorned with colourful embroidered silk and wore three white ostrich feathers in their hair, evoking the fashion of the late 1700s, characterised by wide mantua hoop skirts. Queen Charlotte's commitment to tradition led to some unique fashion combinations, even when the empire silhouette featuring a high waist and slender columnar skirt came into vogue in 1804. The Queen, with her love for the past, insisted on preserving the hoop skirts reminiscent of her youth. Known as an amateur matchmaker, Charlotte would suggest advantageous pairings for the women, providing insights into the latest gossip of London's upper class, referred to as a ton, in her letters to her husband and friends. Queen Charlotte's Ball became a prominent social event and continued until 1958, when Queen Elizabeth II decided to discontinue the ceremony. Nonetheless, the women's balls found their way to the United States, serving as a foundation for a more democratic alternative, known as the high school prom. In the early 2000s, Queen Charlotte's Ball was revived in London, now featuring classes on business skills, networking, etiquette and philanthropy. The women still curtsy to a magnificent birthday cake, symbolising the memory of the illustrious Queen Charlotte. In 1800, Charlotte organised a Christmas ball at the Queen's Lodge that had a significant impact on British culture. She invited all the children of Windsor to attend and was surprised to see a decorated yew tree in the drawing room, which was the first English Christmas tree. This tradition was originally an ancient German pagan custom, but it was Christianised by Martin Luther in 1500s. Charlotte had already introduced this tradition to her own children, and every Christmas she would decorate a single yew branch with the help of her ladies-in-waiting. However, in 1800, she went all out and decorated the tree with sweet meats, fruits, toys and small wax candles. The children were thrilled to receive a portion of these treats and toys, and this event popularised the tradition of decorating Christmas trees in Britain and its colonies. Charlotte had a wide range of interests, including playing cards, horseback riding, and singing while playing the harpers chord. She and George had a preference for German music, particularly the works of George Frederick Handel. To improve her musical skills, she hired Joe and Christian Bach, the son of Joe and Sebastian Bach, as her personal music teacher. Charlotte even hosted a young Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart at the palace, where he played complex arrangements and accompanied the Queen's singing of an aria. Mozart later dedicated his Opus Three to her. Charlotte was hesitant to let her daughters marry, as she didn't want them to endure the pain of constant pregnancy and leave her side. Nevertheless, they became restless and longed to start their own lives, leading to a few of them having affairs with palace servants instead. Of her six daughters, only three got married, and one of them had a stillborn child. Charlotte's sons, on the other hand, were giving more freedom, perhaps too much so. 
George the Eldest was given his palace, Carlton House, at the age of 18, where he indulged in drinking and affairs with the mistresses. His annual allowance of £50,000 was insufficient to support his extravagant lifestyle, and he frequently had arguments with his parents. He secretly married to Catholic commoner Maria Fitzherbert, but his father refused to bail him out of debt unless he left Maria and married his first cousin, Caroline of Brunswick. The couple married the next day and had a child named Charlotte nine months later, but they despised each other. The Queen was responsible for bringing up her granddaughter. Charlotte had a mild interest in politics and mainly focused on German affairs to help her brother. She may have influenced her husband to intervene in the war of Bavarian succession, but asked her brother to destroy any letters related to politics to avoid offending her husband. Charlotte remained largely uninvolved in the tumultuous political events that unfolded during George III's reign. While he aimed to be an active ruler rather than a mere figurehead, George III campaigned and invested money in political candidates who would support his agenda. He successfully fragmented the political parties and appointed a compliant Prime Minister who would carry out his wishes. However, George did not anticipate being held responsible when things went awry. One of George's initiatives was his interest in agriculture and his desire to have more land owned and farmed by aristocrats. To accomplish this, he championed the Enclosures Act of 1773, which allowed the wealthy to seize and enclose a significant portion of the country's common land that had been shared and cultivated by communities for centuries. This had a profound impact concentrating wealth in the hands of privileged few while impoverishing and starving the rest of the population. Another ill-fated decision was the imposition of the Stamp Act, a tax levied on the American colonies. The colonists were outraged as they had their own local governments and taxation systems and saw no reason to pay taxes to a distant government in which they had no representation. In 1776, they declared their independence from Britain, and George dispatched his army to suppress the rebellion. But after five years of warfare, the scrappy colonists emerged victorious over the formidable Redcoat army. With a need for a new penal colony, Britain turned its attention to the recently explored continent of Australia, establishing a settlement there in 1788. Meanwhile, in 1788, King George suffered another severe bout of mental illness. He exhibited symptoms such as incessant talking, foaming at the mouth and rampaging through the palace. The exact nature of his illness remains unclear, whether it was porphyria, a hereditary blood disorder or another condition like bipolar. Charlotte was frightened by her husband's outburst and requested to be moved to a separate bedroom. She and their daughters visited him daily, although these visits were fraught with tension. The king would often cling to them and engage in imaginary conversations with their deceased sons, Octavius and Alfred. Tensions also arose between Charlotte and her 26-year-old son, George, Prince of Wales. She suspected him of conspiring to have doctors declare the king insane so that he could assume the regency. Similarly, he suspected her of attempting to have her own doctors declare the king sane in order to establish herself as regent. Ultimately, Parliament appointed Prince George as regent while naming Charlotte as the king's guardian. Charlotte maintained a correspondence with Queen Marie Antoinette of France for many years, although they never met in person. They bonded over their shared love of music and art. In 1789, the French Revolution erupted, leading to the imprisonment of Marie Antoinette, her husband Louis XV, and their children. Charlotte attempted to orchestrate a plot to rescue her friend and even prepared palace apartments for the French royals. She was devastated to learn of Louis and Marie Antoinette's subsequent execution by guillotine. In 1798, Ireland rebelled against British rule and was ultimately defeated. Parliament later enacted the 1800 Act of Union, officially incorporating Ireland into the renamed United Kingdom. George III's mental decline continued unabated, leaving him permanently trapped in a state of madness from which he would never recover. Witnessing her beloved spouse endure suffering was an incredibly arduous experience for Charlotte, 
she actively avoided encountering him and her own demeanour underwent a transformation. Depression and a volatile temper became part of her character. Even activities she once relished, such as attending public events like concerts, no longer brought her joy. To alleviate her headache, she developed a dependency on snuff, a powder tobacco substance snorted through the nose. Unfortunately, her relationship with her adult children became strained during this time, and amidst the difficulties, Charlotte discovered solace in the creative pursuit of designing the interiors and gardens of a newly constructed residence known as Frogmore House. From 1811 to 1820, the Prince of Wales assumed the role of Prince Regent, a period famously referred to as the Regency. As he was estranged from his wife Caroline, Charlotte acted as the de facto First Lady of the court, standing alongside him as a hostess. The Prince, eager to have a purpose, engaged in frequent disputes with Parliament, and his extravagant lifestyle during the Napoleonic Wars, while the nation endured austerity measures, caused him to be despised by the public. The hopes of the Hanovian dynasty rested on their only legitimate child, the beautiful and level-headed Princess Charlotte, and her handsome husband, Prince Leopold. Tragically, all those hopes were shattered when she passed away during childbirth at the tender age of 21. The entire nation mourned this heart-wrenching loss, and Queen Charlotte grieved deeply for her cherished granddaughter. The princess's untimely death proved to be a catastrophe for the Hanovian dynasty, and despite having 12 adult children, George and Charlotte had no legitimate grandchildren to succeed the throne. While some of their sons had children with their mistresses, these offspring were ineligible for inheritance. Thus, there was a pressing need to avert a succession crisis. In response, Parliament offered monetary incentives to the princes if they would sever ties with their mistresses, marry foreign princesses, and produce a new generation of royal heirs. One pamphlet of the time humorously quipped, hot and hard, each royal pair are at it, hunting for the heir. The victor in this procreative race was Edward, Duke of Kent, the fourth son who would father the future Queen Victoria. Sadly, Queen Charlotte never had the opportunity to meet her granddaughter. She passed away on the 7th of November 1818 at the age of 74, only six months before Victoria's birth. Her son, Prince George, was by her side, holding her hand at the age of 74, merely six months before Victoria's birth, holding her hand during her final moments. Charlotte had served as Queen Consort for an impressive 57 years, the second longest tenure in British history, following only Prince Philip. King George III had deteriorated to such an extent that he was not informed of his wife's passing. He himself passed away a little over a year later, at the age of 81. He was laid to rest beside his beloved wife in the royal vault beneath St George's Chapel in Windsor. In recent times there have been headlines asserting that Queen Charlotte was Britain's first black or biracial queen. This notion arises from portraits of Charlotte painted by Alan Ramsey, which depict her with facial features that some interpret as having African influences. Additionally, her lineage has been traced back to the 13th century Portuguese king, Alfonso III, and his mistress, Madrigana, which may have been a black moor. However, it is crucial to note that the portraits of the same subject often vary significantly and are not reliable evidence of an individual's true appearance. Furthermore, Charlotte was separated by 500 years and 15 generations, which means Charlotte's potential Moorish heritage would have been constituted less.